segments round top when we were at the topography of Terra, which is just five minutes walking distance away from Checkpoint Charlie. Slow, slow down, slow down, please, very slow. To your left is uh, an installation reminiscent of the Bohemian Bethlehem's church, and once would have stood here from the 18th century, destroyed in the war, torn down after. And there's a house ball sculpture by Klaus Oldenborg, and to your left, this building was designed for Philip Johnson, and these are new office buildings from the 90s. Right now, we're already going through Checkpoint Charlie. Now the border, slow down, please, slow, slow, slow. Encircle West Berlin was 100 miles long, but there were some checkpoints connecting West Berlin to the transit links, and there were also, slow, slow please, and turn right, some checkpoints between East and West Berlin. Now, Western Allied personnel were entitled to visit East Berlin also, because of the Allied Four Power Centers. The Western Allied personnel had a right of free access to all parts of Berlin, including the Soviet sector. That is why the East German government, when it built the wall in 1961, was obliged to open up a border crossing. And in the West, it was called Checkpoint Charlie. Slow, 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 please. On the left side, you see a photograph. To your left, tanks, American tanks on one side of Checkpoint Charlie and Russian tanks on the other. This was the famous incident of October 1961. Soviet and American tanks confronting each other when quarreling had broken out over the showing of passports by the Americans. Ultimately, nothing happened. No shots were fired, but for 16 hours it was very tense, and that incident made Jack Charlie instantly famous all over the world. On the left side, you see the replica of the first American guardhouse from 1961, and right behind it's the Jack Charlie Museum, was the flags of the Allied powers of World War II hoisted. Park here, please. The museum was first opened by a private association here in 1963 in the middle building. And now it's also been uh, extended and branches out. No, 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 no don't open. Into the joke is that it became famous in 1961 with that incident with the tanks. There's one room in the museum uh, that will give you the specifics about this incident. Uh, in fact, you know, uh, just two years ago I met a retired US Army colonel who told me one of his buddies at West Point was in one of the tanks and they were all ready to go. And unfortunately, neither side really was that interested in escalating this into World War III. So, compromise was reached, and Allied personnel in uniform would not be held up by the East German border guards going through the checkpoint, and Allied personnel in civilian clothes, they would hold up the passports next to their faces, or against the car window, but not hand them over. And nothing ever came of that incident. Sometimes spies were exchanged at Checkpoint Charlie, sometimes people were smuggled through Checkpoint Charlie, uh, by diplomats or foreign visitors. The names derived from the NATO alphabet, Alpha, Bravo, Charlie, that's how they spell NATO, and in 1961, checkpoints Alpha and Bravo, you see, were already in place on two ends of the main transit motorway that connected West Berlin to West Germany. Uh, the East Germans called the checkpoint Checkpoint Friedrichstraße after the name of the street, but in the West it came to be called Checkpoint Charlie. And on the West Berlin side, there was this little guard house um, with American military police inside, and later there was a bigger version, and the British and the French joined in. And it was to register Allied visitors into East Berlin, making sure nobody got lost on the other side, as it were. Inside the museum you will find photographic documentation also about how the later versions of the guardhouse looked like. The museum is about uh, the wall and uh, the history behind it, and it's also specifically telling the story of the many escapes and escape attempts of East Germans, digging tunnels in the early years following the erection of the wall, later building balloons, uh, hiding in vehicles, uh, all these various brave escapes and escape attempts. And East German government made it a, a an offense under the East German Penal Code as early as 1957 to leave without a permit. Flight from the Republic was called. Punishable was up to three years in prison or more. It's very arbitrary and uh, over 33,000 political prisoners, mostly people who would try to leave and cross the border legally, uh, were ransomed by the West German government, paid over three billion Deutschmarks to the East German 
government for these people to be released to West Germany and others were never released. And people got shot and killed. We, we mentioned this, the border guards on patrol were actually instructed to apprehend or destroy anybody who tried to run across. That's what the border guards were literally told. Try and catch them, but if you can't, rather shoot them dead and let them get away. 50,000 border guards were in the employ of the East German government as late as 1989. 38,000 of whom were guarding the inner German border and uh, 12,000 of whom were employed at the Berlin Wall. <coughs> 2,500 were on patrol at any given time, one o'clock, all around West Berlin. The border strip was not uniform. We were inside the former border strip once more. It's the street ahead that leads to that section of the wall that we've seen in topography of terror. At the very next traffic lights, it's the former Nazi aviation ministry on the right again, and that piece of the wall on the left in topography of terror. So it's just really five minutes walking distance. The Checkpoint Charlie Museum is right behind. And uh, yeah, it's not too big a museum, and um, we should do okay if we spend about 45 minutes. And then, of course, if you want, you can spend more time, as this is within walking distance from your hotel, really. The street behind is Friedrichstrasse. Now, to your left behind is the Checkpoint Charlie Museum. Okay, now we have our second part, and we're heading out to the German Russian Museum, which is on the southeastern outskirts of Berlin. Well, almost anyway, it's a little bit of a drive. You'll see more of Berlin as we go along. Residential areas mostly. And then we have um, um, expert guides provided by the museum itself. Two guiders uh, will divide up into two groups. One starting at 11 and the other at 11.15 for a guided tour of the museum of about an hour. We'll arrive a little bit earlier, uh, so you have a little bit of time to uh, familiarize yourselves, as it were, with the museum and look at the historic hall um, where the actual ceremony of surrender took place on May 8th, 1945. And left, please. Entirely on the uh, German invasion of Russia, 1941 and a vicious uh, war waged there by the German armed forces. And then also they're all back all the way to Berlin. As you may know, the first ceremony of surrender was uh, held in Reims on 7th of May. But the second ceremony uh, is considered proper, desired especially by the Soviet side to be held in Berlin, Karlshorst, uh, that's an area name, it's a bit east, and uh, former engineers, barracks, uh, officers, mess, in fact, as some of the leading generals hadn't been present in Reims, which was one reason given, but in Karlshorst, uh, Keitel himself Chief of the uh, Supreme Commander of the Armed Forces, Oberkommander der Wehrmacht, was present and signed the act of surrender. A little bit after midnight, actually. But officially, uh, May 8th <coughs> is the day the war ends, at least as far as Germany and the Axis powers are concerned in Europe. This is my left, please. Left. And then after that, uh, the plan is that we'll head out to the biggest of the three Soviet war memorials. You remember we passed one yesterday, close to the Brandenburg Gate. And then there's another in Pankow Schönholz with an obelisk. It's also a bit far in the northeast, but there's also the Treptow Park Soviet war memorial, which is quite monumental and impressive. When we get to the German-Russian Museum, in fact, you will already see some uh, yeah, depictions of that. And, some mosaic glass windows. There's one giant Red Army soldier statue there, 12 meters tall, Red Army soldier holding a safe child on his arm and then with the other hand a sword smashing a swastika at his feet. And that dates back to 1949, so the plan is then to visit that after, before we come back to the hotel to finish at about two o'clock. Germany. 
in a space in East Berlin. In every occupation zone you see had a military governor of the respective power. And then, in addition, the city of Berlin had been divided up separately into allied sectors, and every sector had a city commandant, who has his office elsewhere, however. So, Berlin was a German capital under the vicious Nazi dictatorship as well. It was from Berlin and Hitler unleashed World War II. Turn left, please. On June 22nd, 1941, Hitler launched Operation Barbarossa, the invasion of the Soviet Union with three million soldiers, and then not only SS units, so-called Einsatzgruppen, committed murder, but also many units of the regular armed forces committed war crimes and crimes against humanity. The estimate is, for instance, uh, over three million Soviet prisoners of war who had already been put into POW camps in Slovenia were systematically starved to death in POW camps that were run by the regular armed forces. The Japanese attack of Pearl Harbor, the United States joined in the war. Four days after, Hitler declared war on the United States. Apparently, he thought that was a good idea. <laughs> and this brought about the unlikely coalition of England and the United States and the Soviet Union. Stalin was an evil dictator himself, of course, who had made a pact with Hitler. As late as 23rd of August, slow, 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 please. 1939, about the division of Poland, and after Hitler had uh, attacked Poland on S September 1st, 1939. Park there, please. There, we already we've arrived. The German Russian Museum, another T-34 tank. Uh, Stalin moved in the Red Army from the east on September 17th already and said, well, Poland has ceased to exist. And then Red Army committed war crimes as well. The most notorious uh, example is the massacre of Katyn when 3,000 Red Ar uh, Polish army officers who had already been captured were massacred by the Red Army. But then less than two years later, the Soviet Union also became a victim of Nazi aggression. And then united by a common enemy, the Soviet Union was supported uh, with uh, funds and materials. And uh, as you know, the final Battle of Berlin commenced on April 16th, 1945. Red Army advanced from the Oder River bridgeheads with two and a half million men towards Berlin. Um, 40,000 guns, 6,000 tanks, 7,500 fighter aircraft, and then under heavy losses, finally conquered Berlin which surrendered unconditionally on May 2nd as a city. And then the first ceremony of surrender for Germany uh, was held on May 7th in Reims. And the second ceremony was held here in this building to your right on May 8th. And the actual hall um, is yeah open to visitors and you have some time to see it before your official tour with the museum guide starts for the first group mm. at 11 and for the second group at 11.15, which will last about an hour. Um, and then after we should depart, uh, about Belarus. Okay. I never knew it was Belarus. Why, why do we have a Belarus flag? Because they were here at the surrender. Okay. She's good. Okay, this is the other one. Okay, because this one This was a Russian T-34 tank. So this is where the surrender was signed by Keitel to General Zukov.
think the inside they probably had a wall already laid out. Yeah. <laughs> somebody else's sign. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 Yeah.
That is a, an object of the old museum from 1967, the Soviet um, museum. And until today, or also today, we have other important objects in our exhibition, um, which are from that time, because we want to show the whole history of that building, also inside the house. And now I will show you one really yeah, uh, interesting object of that time, and then you can see how the Soviet Union, or better the GDR, um, tells the story of that war. We in Germany say German-Soviet war, so the war between Germany and Soviet from 1941 to 1945. In the Soviet Union and also today in Russia and the Ukraine and White Russia, um, that war is called the Great Patriotic War. Maybe you've heard about it. Yeah. Okay. So Okay, you see here um, a diorama, so a three-dimensional object um, which shows the conquest of the um, Reichstag, Berliner Reichstag. And the interesting is that um, the diorama um, shows um, a, a very important symbol for the um, Russian or Soviet memory culture. Uh